The Rosicrucian path is the journey of the mystic. Few souls brave it at any single time. Yet, it is this internal voyage that has rewarded many of our greatest minds with the ability to enrich the world. But it is a pilgrimage each individual must travel in their own time, for it reveals the path of knowing, it transcends time and space. This path of the Rosicrucian reveals higher truths for personal evolution. You are invited to witness its sacred history. Atlantis. For centuries, scholars have argued over the existence of an advanced civilization with vast technological, scientific, and spiritual knowledge. Much of the earliest public information in recorded history comes from the Athenian philosopher Plato, whose famous works the Critias and the Timaeus include accounts of this ancient and advanced society. According to Plato, Atlantis was a massive island in the Atlantic Ocean said to be the creation of the Greek god Poseidon. In the Critias, the philosopher wrote about the values of the Atlantean society. They despised everything but virtue, caring little for their present state of life and thinking lightly of the possession of gold and other property, which seemed only a burden to them. Neither were they intoxicated by luxury, nor did wealth deprive them of their self-control, but they were sober and saw clearly that all these goods are increased by virtue and friendship with one another. The Greek god of the sea is said to have appointed ten kings when creating order in Atlantis. Each with his own division and within his own city, these kings had absolute control over citizens and laws alike, punishing and even killing as the monarch chose. Some believe it is the cradle of primordial tradition, which flows through Rosicrucian tradition. Legend tells us the first king of Egypt was chosen among the Atlanteans, and later Thutmose III, in addition to serving as pharaoh, together with his co-pharaoh Hatshepsut, organized the mystery schools together as a single order. Thutmose III, was a very controlling and organizing individual. One of the things he was very interested in, in was the already operating classes concerning mysticism, looking into the mysteries of life. And he organized them from disparate groups to one solid class. He did not interfere with the thinking of the generality of the Egyptian people who worship many gods. The incredible detail is often chalked up to the imagination by those uninterested in the esoteric mysteries of the ancient past. Yet, Plato is practical in his description and even goes so far as to describe the Atlantean landscape, architecture and infrastructure, pointing out their advanced use of water, stating, in the next place, they had fountains, one of cold and another of hot water in gracious plenty flowing, and they were wonderfully adapted for use by reason of the pleasantness and excellence of their waters. They constructed buildings about them and planted suitable trees. Also they made cisterns, some open to the heavens, others roofed over, to be used in winter as warm baths. There were the royal baths and the baths of private persons, which were kept apart and there were separate baths for women and for horses and cattle, and to each of them they gave as much adornment as was suitable. According to Plato, his knowledge was derived from the work of Solon, who lived in the 7th and 6th centuries BCE. The accounts don't end with Plato, however, with references by Herodotus, Plutarch, Proclus, and several other Greek thinkers of similar era. Atlantis flourished for millennia, until it declined due to corruption, warmongering, superstition, and finally ending in cataclysm. In the 1600s, it was Sir Francis Bacon, a scientific and philosophical pioneer at the time and leader to the Rosicrucians who used the idea of an ideal civilization in his utopian work, The New Atlantis. Even today, there is a great desire by the greater collective consciousness to find the lost underwater civilization known as Atlantis, 
Various nuggets of truth about it have been the subject of countless comic books, novels, movies, and television shows. The legend persists, and their ancient knowledge and high ideals continue to be passed down through esoteric tradition. But what the mainstream doesn't acknowledge is the fate of the sacred knowledge which was nearly lost when Atlantis was destroyed. There are several theories ranging from a great flood to volcanoes and even misuse of highly advanced technology. But could the survivors of Atlantis have passed their wisdom onto another society? Although a consensus of researchers places Rosicrucian historical beginnings in the 17th century, we are of the opinion that the genesis of this movement dates from much further back. Such was the belief of German alchemist Michael Meyer. In his work, Silencium Post Clamoris, he described Rosicrucianism as having arisen from the Egyptians, the Brahmins, the mysteries of Eleusis, and Samothrace, and the Magi of Persia, the Pythagoreans, and the Arabs. Its mystery schools, which acted both as universities and monasteries, were the guardians of its wisdom. These schools experienced a distinctive flowering under the rule of Akhenaten, especially after he introduced the concept of monotheism. The Egyptian religion is particularly intriguing because of its mystery schools. The figure of Hermes Trismegistus had some of his origins in Egypt in the god Toth together with the Greek god Hermes. According to Christian Rabis, in the Egyptian pantheon, Toth enjoyed a special illustriousness. He was shown as an ibis-headed man or as a baboon. Equipped with a palette, reed, and papyrus, he was always ready to transcribe the word of Ra. He was the very epitome of a scribe. He was described as the inventor of hieroglyphs. Toth was the protector of scribes, the teacher of medicine, astronomy, and the arts. He knew the secrets of magic. He was the initiator. In the New Kingdom, under Akhenaten, the ancient pantheon was abolished and the cult of Aten was instituted. Even so, Toth preserved certain prerogatives during the pharaoh's reign. After the disappearance of the founder of Egyptian monotheism, Toth regained his recognition as all-knowing sage and the teacher of secrets. During this period, writings of an occult character became important. Harvey Spencer Lewis a noted Rosicrucian author, mystic, founder in the USA, and first imperator of the ancient and mystical order Rosi Crucis. Regarded Tutmosis III, the pharaoh who introduced this period, as the organizer of the school of initiates that later gave rise to the Rose Cross. The occult knowledge of the Egyptians was considered secret. It was transmitted by houses of life, sometimes called mystery schools, which were attached to each temple. It was well documented between Herodotus and Plato that the Greek traditions owed much to Egyptian priests. Both men had visited Egypt and learned of many similarities in their pantheons. There existed a strong tradition which claimed the great sages of ancient Greece obtained their knowledge from the Egyptian teachers. It was claimed that many among them were initiated into the mysteries thus assuring the transmission of Egyptian learning into the Greek world. During the time of the Ptolemaic dynasty in Egypt and into the early common era, the teachings of the Egyptian mystery schools began to emerge in a Hellenized form that we have received as the Corpus Hermeticum, probably written down by the second century CE and attributed to the syncretistic figure Hermes Trismegistus. In addition to inspiring a great deal of philosophical and mystical thought, the Corpus Hermeticum was adopted as a holy book by the Sabians of Haran. We have our first copies of the Emerald Tablet of Hermes Trismegistus, a text which assumed an important place in the Hermetic and alchemical tradition in the 6th or 7th century in Arabic. It was found in a work that is attributed to Apollonius of Tyana, a philosopher and thaumaturge of the first century CE. In this book, Apollonius relates how he discovered the tomb of Hermes. He claims to have found in a sepulcher an old man seated on a throne holding an emerald colored tablet upon which appeared the text of the famed emerald tablet. Before him was a book of secrets explaining the secrets of creation of beings 
and the knowledge of the causes for all things. Around the 9th century, Ibn Washia, in a treatise entitled The Knowledge of the Occult Unveiled, presented many occult alphabets attributed to Hermes. He also made reference to the four classes of Egyptian priests descended from Hermes, including one class from the sister of Hermes Trismegistus. Magic also occupied a central position in Arab life. Islam made use of magical letters, much like the Hebrew Kabbalah, for penetrating the Quran's secrets. Moreover, Arab magic, which Christian Rosenkreutz informed us much later, was quite varied and encompassed a wide range – astrology, medicine, talismans, etc. Astrology was ever-present in the Islamic world. The heritage of Hermes Trismegistus is manifold. Its treasures, alchemy, magic, and astrology constitute essential elements of traditional esotericism and have traversed many civilizations. Nonetheless, the latter have always considered Egypt to be the mother of all traditions. In the Middle Ages, the ancient heritage penetrated the West, and by the time of the Italian Renaissance, it took on a new aspect in constituting what is generally called Western esotericism. It then developed in a special way so as to reach a critical threshold on the brink of the publication of the Rosicrucian Manifestos.